see, uh, I look very much forward to welcome my next guest. Uh, that is uh, Francois Martin from uh, from Bobs. So uh, welcome to our Learn With Us session here. Hello, hello. You can turn on your webcam if you click on the little uh, blue one next to the microphone in the top, if you like. <laughs> or are you very secret? <laughs> No, hello, I did not saw it. Hello, hello. How are you, Francois? No, doing well. Thank you very much. Good morning to you. And, and uh, do you want me to keep my headset or I, you, yeah, I can go? That's Does fine. It matter? No, okay. no, I think it's good to have a good sound so we can hear what you're saying. I think that you have, I mean, I, first of all, I want to appreciate a lot that you could uh, step on so uh, rapidly because of the uh, uh, yesterday, Hikon, they uh, got like uh, sickness in there uh, with the, the, the person that was going to present, so they had to cancel. So uh, we go from uh, from one finishing device to another finishing device, plus, because you do a lot of more things, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. So at Bob's, I mean, packaging is uh, what we have been doing for uh, 130 years. And uh, we hope to continue for the same amount of years. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure about that. And, and you know, um, I can't help think that uh, uh, it was uh, it was some kind of blast in print week yesterday when Bob's announced that you are not uh, part of the next trooper. It must have been a very hard decision for you guys. Yeah, correct. In fact, Bob's was at the first trooper in 1951. Really? Have, yes, yes, yes. We were there and we sold 49 machines at that time. At the, at the first group? Yes, yes. And, okay. um, but it was the time where uh, trade shows were the only way uh, to see machines. So 70 years after, the world is changing and um, yes. the coronavirus has really accelerated decisions. And we knew already in 2020 we were guessing that Drupa 2020 would be the last big Drupa. That, that oh. was the existing thinking. At least when I was working at HP, we said that. Working for Bob's now for two years, I, I, I think we can uh, we said it as well. The challenge with stretchers is you need to carry a lot, a lot of equipment. You need to send a lot of employees. It's very costly. And then you have a very big environmental impact yes, uh, because you have to carry. I mean, if you look at Drupa, I don't know the exact numbers, but I can guess that we are talking about 100,000 tons mm. of equipment mm. that is shipped to Düsseldorf. Yeah. Some of it is destroyed, all yeah, the yeah. stand design and all these things. Yeah. So the environmental impact is significant. But in addition to that, and this is probably the most important one, we have a lot of customers they are between 30 and 40. They are very agile. They know how to work with modern technologies, like what you do today. It feels like you are in front of me. And, you are in front of me as well, Francois. <laughs> and, 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 and these customers are telling us, I don't mind to come to Drupa, but it is, I, I, we need to find other means to access information. We need to, to, to get to see your machines. We need to talk to you without having to travel a thousand kilometers. Yes. So th there was a, the new generation was still okay to go to Drupa, but they were asking us to find other ways. And what we are going to do, we are going to invest more in our um, demo centers that we call now smart factories. We will uh, make customer experience more relevant, and then we will start to virtualize and broadcast through the internet products so we don't know yet exactly how it will be done but we have started for label for label printing you can call me monday and you can say hey, francois i want to see your new digital label price and i will make a demo just for you and the streaming quality is very good and then if you really like it then you will have to come at a certain moment coming face to face will be required but so you that, don't have to fly to label expo yeah yeah so that basically also means that when you look at uh, uh, the qualification process of leads for both your sake and for the customer's sake is very good because instead of traveling spending a lot of time on going forth and back you can you can you can kind of uh, you can take off the list before you actually meet right so you can say now we're here this is really uh, something that has a value right 
Exactly. Of course, at trade shows, you had the opportunity to see Bob's in the morning, HP in the afternoon, Xicon later, uh, Heidelberg uh, later. You could see more in one day. I agree. Yeah. You could also have, let's say, you could have a drink with someone, you can have a dinner. But in 2021, with the coronavirus, it's going to be very limited. Yeah, 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 limited yeah, yeah. distanciation yeah, yeah. and this and that. So at the end of the end, we said, hey, we are living into a, we are going to live in a new world. We need to make bold decisions. And you cannot say, I want to change, and you don't change. No, that, that's true. the thing. So yeah. we it was not an easy decision, but we no. believe that um, it is the right decision. Yeah, I can tell you that um, I wrote an article on English News about your decision and Xerox's decision about uh, the value of trade show this morning on English News. So, uh, so I have already commented on things, and I think that uh, you know printers have for years been you know under pressure to change because the market is changing. Media has to change because the need for media are changing. Vendors are changing, and of course, also organizers of events needs to change because the time is changing. Not just yeah. because of the corona, but in general, our societies are changing. So I think it's a very natural development. And I think that sometimes you can always you can always speculate about when is the right time to do things. Uh, but I think that with a, with COVID nineteen, I I don't know if that was part of your equation too. But I think a lot of vendors have been like. Uh, if you have like these four years development cycles and you present your latest thing at, at a trade show like Drupal and now it's canceled uh, or postponed, that doesn't give you an opportunity to say that we just we just wait for a year. And oh, no, that, no. That, that, you have to you have to put things to market, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But so what you said is one of the, the element of the decision. We could not say, oh, let's put everything in the fridge and then we, we open it again in a year. Because we, we had we had everything scheduled for Drupa 2020. That was the plan. But now that it is postponed, then it makes things more complicated and we cannot wait. And then in addition, assuming you go to Drupa 2021, then you have to go again in Drupa 2024. Yeah. But then it's kind of wow, we don't yeah. we are not inventing new machines so so quickly. No. And if you do, and if you invent a machine that needs to be that needs to go to market tomorrow then you will have to deliver it tomorrow you can't wait yeah. three years for that right so that yeah, is yeah. like uh, yeah, a so new but, way of thinking yeah. but Rupa, it was it was it was a good trade show it, yeah. it was really the, the 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 clock of the industry every four years and this and that but things are changing and and the coronavirus has really accelerated many decisions and if you look at the automotive industry they are also yeah, the counseling yeah, the where yeah. there are big trade shows yeah. And, and the watch industry, I am living in Switzerland, where watches are very important, so you can see one over oh, here. Oh, that's a nice watch, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so the trade shows for watches also have been concerned. Mm. Mm. And, and this is just the beginning. And I really, I am, personally, I love Drupa. It was nice to be there 11 days with industry friends. We had nice dinners, good beers, and so on. But if I am now thinking for my kids, I have three children. They are pretty big. Uh, two are doctors and one is pharmacist. But they they are going to suffer from the environment, the climate change. Mm -hmm. The climate change is a big deal. If you would live, if you would look outside here in Switzerland, mm -hmm. we are we are two months ahead of schedule. Okay. So, in some part of France where my family is living, it looks like Morocco. Okay. I'm wow. not joking. No, it's no, so no. hot in summer. We are reaching 40 degrees. So yeah. the climate change is a major burden for mm. the entire society. Mm. And if we don't accept to reduce the environmental uh, pain and climate change, we need to do something for the climate. Definitely, and these yeah. big trade shows, as lo I love them, but the environmental impact is, is more significant, is, is, is tremendous. Yeah. You can imagine Drupa, 11 days, yeah, 200,000 yeah. people taking the plane, yeah. 100,000 of tons shipped yeah. by boat, by I, I, train, by uh, trucks, and sometimes by plane. I can tell you in uh, in one of the comments on my article on LinkedIn, today was actually one guy that was doing a calculation on what you just say about the carbon emissions. So I am, uh, I'm totally aligned with what you're saying. So, but you know, 
I appreciate that you gave us a little bit of, of that one, but I think that we should talk about trends and challenges in packaging. Don't you think so? Absolutely. Was, I'm ready. I'm the, ready. That was the leading question. So, uh, so um, you, we have already uploaded your presentation. So basically, uh, when I click start presentation, I think that you should be able to take it away, from, uh, Francois. Okay. So looking at the trends and challenges in packaging and um, this is now becoming a very important topic um, for the obvious reason that all the brand owners all of them small to big they want to do two things if you summarize they want to be more agile in launching products across all the distribution channels and they want to reduce the environmental impact in summary that's what packaging is all about so now if we look at packaging, um, the big challenge, it is that to make packaging, you have brand owners, retailers that are impacted by packaging. And these guys, they have pressure from newcomers. They are disrupted by digital technologies, new consumer engagement. They need to move faster. Then you have converters and packers. They are the ones really producing the goods. And what they see, it is, uh, Packaging variations and complexity, faster time to market requirements, um, job size are reducing, and obviously you continue to have cost pressure. No one is willing to pay more for, for what he has today. And then, of course, you have companies like Bobst and uh, companies like Esco, as an example, in software. We are providing equipment to enable packaging production. And in addition to all of these, you have new governmental regulations, and you have also consumer putting pressure to understand better what is in the box, where was it made, security, and then in addition, we have the so-called plastic ban. People want to see a reduction in plastic consumption. So that's in short, the big challenges that we are all facing. So now, if you look at brand owners, and I'm not going to go into all the details, but you have production drivers, you have marketing drivers, you have brand integrity drivers. So all the words you see on that slide are really the packaging, impacting packaging productions. You need to have an agile operation, you need to provide quality, you need to protect the goods, obviously, effectively. You need to ensure customization, personalization, versioning. You call it the, one, the way you want. You, you need to reduce cost as much as you can. You need to work with recyclable materials. Uh, you need to print only what you need to avoid waste and so on and so on. So that's all the challenges. Now, if we, if we look at the different technologies, and here this is a very simple presentation. So to produce packaging, you need to print, and then you need to cut, fold, and glue, uh, and to make pouches in flexible packaging. So let's start with printing. So in printing today for packaging, the most used technologies is offset that some call lithography. So offset lithography is the technology used the most, 64%. Then flexo printing is uh, flexography is used, it's growing a little bit. Gravure is one of the oldest technologies declining. And then unprinted, some of the boxes we have are not printed. And then digital is entering. Digital is growing very fast. It's still very small. And here I'm talking about the total amount of packages produced a year. So it's only 1%, but it's growing very fast. And if you're in digital printing, if you move from one to two, you double your business. So that's very significant. But that's the technologies that are used today. So now if we go quickly to the technologies uh, and where they fit. So here you see printing, it fits into what I call the packaging workflow from the brand owners designing a new box, then the pre press. This is where companies like uh, ESCO are very active. Then the printing, then the embellishment, the cutting, the folding, gluing. Then comes the packers filling the box, inline printing sometimes to put some security features or additional information. And then the distribution of the goods, storage of the goods, and then putting them on pallets and then shipping them either in e-commerce or in the on the shelf of retailers. So here we are first talking about printing. So printing, different technologies. So gravure, I told you very old. Where do you find gravure? It's mainly for 
super high volume of goods, chewing gums, cigarettes, so super high quality metallic effects, super high speed, very low cost, but don't change anything because it's going to be very costly to make a change of the printing cylinders. So that's for gravure. The most used technology offset, so offset printing, cost effective, it's effective for all kinds of volumes, very flexible, very easy, um, dominating companies in, in printing, companies like Heidelberg, you will know them, and it is mainly used for paper and bonds. It's not really used for flexible packaging and not really for labels. It's not designed for customization on short runs, but it works really well for printing. And then digital is going to make some inroads uh, to replace offset over time. Then typical, and then flex flow, flexo printing. So flexo printing, you will see it for labels, for flexible packaging, for folding, for uh, some folding carton, and corrugated boards. So corrugated boards are done using flexo printing technology. Very effective for medium and long runs, high quality, very fast. You can produce like 12,000 boxes per hour on, on, uh, on Bob's machines. So super high production for, for carton and corrugated boards. And uh, the, the limitations, it's, um, it's not really designed for short runs and prototyping. But this is a very good technology. And now coming to digital. So digital is making significant inroads. And you have two types of technologies, inkjet and the indigo electrophotography. This is the two big technologies. And this is fantastic for promotional packaging, prototyping, for label production, very fast time to market, cost effective. And you will see more players entering into that field. Today, the main challenge, it is that outside of labels, it is not really cost effective. It's pretty much designed for short runs, prototyping, limited editions, things like that. But over time, things will change. So we need to keep an eye on digital printing. Uh, if you look here, I put all the technologies on one page. So here, this is the job length super high volume on the right and then here this is the cost on the left very cheap at the bottom more expensive on the top and here you see a nice mapping of the technologies uh, bottom right gravure as i told you declining very effective for the long runs very cheap per copy but not flexible at all in the middle the big piece of the cake is offset and central impression flexography for flexible packaging, folding carton, and um, corrugated boards. And then here, inline flexo, you will find it mainly for labels, and then digital. So that's a, in a short overview of the everything. Now comes, after printing, comes cutting and folding gluing. And this is also very important, because if you print very fast, and then it takes forever, to cut, fold, and glue, you have not achieved much. So let's look at the different um, technologies. So first, I have the slides in the wrong order, excuse me. You have two types of technologies. You have what we call flat bed die cutting and rotary die cutting. So flat bed, it is for typically folding carton and it could be done for corrugated boards. And then rotary die cutting will be for corrugated boards and, and for labels. So this is the two technologies we have. And now, what is how does it work? So on the flatbed, you need tooling. You need die cutters, so basically blades that are going to cut uh, the sheets. Then you have some striping. It would be ejecting uh, some, some elements that you don't need. Uh, and it will also help them to be folded, pre-folded, and then the blanking. So these elements are going to, to be used. And then in rotary die cutting, it is different. It is a cylinder where all the blades are mounted, and then the sheets will go between two big cylinders. One is going to cut, and the other one will, will put the pressure. So here we saw the two technologies. 
And once you, you connect the printing and the converting, this is what we call converting, which for, this is basically the, the die cutting and the folding gluing, then you get your final box. The last element I want to share with you in that very high level presentation of printing and converting, super high level, we, we talked at the beginning about the main challenge, it's packaging consumption and the sustainability challenges. So brand owners, they want to move to, to less plastic. They want to push the circular economy. They want to replace plastic, reduce plastic, reuse plastic, recycle plastic. And to do that, they need to find new materials, new materials with high barrier protection because we still need plastic. We should not dream of a world without plastic. This is not going to be possible. But we can have less and we can have recyclable materials. So things that you can, that will either in the, let's say in five to 10 years down the road, biodegradable, but it's not ready yet. And then in the meantime, we can have recyclable mono material substrate. And here you are, there is a lot of innovations that Bobst is driving with other companies like Dow Chemicals and BASF and then others. So that's in a nutshell, the, the big things, the big trends, what's going on. And then I forgot to mention in, in die cutting and rotary cutting that of course you have laser cutting coming into the game. But again, that technology is very new, still limited in terms of speed and performance. But in the future, you will also find digital uh, laser cutting. Forgot to, to mention that. So the industry is, is at a very critical uh, turning point where uh, things are changing and um, it, will, it will enable a more sustainable packaging production where we will see more digital uh, things happening and, and the key pillars for the future are going to be connectivity where all the machines will be connected one to the other. It will be the digitalization of the entire process because everything starts with a PDF and then it has to be uh, worked on. Then it will be the automation of the machines and then the sustainability that we just discussed. So that's pretty much all the trends and challenges that we have ahead of us. And this is going to be a very interesting for all the ones involved in packaging. The next five years, we'll see a lot, a lot of changes in a very traditional industry that has done a good job over the last 100 years and that is now going to change for a more sustainable packaging production. So that was my short update on packaging. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have questions, you can always find me. I think it was a great presentation. And for me, it was also, uh, I must admit that I come from, from the commercial printing side. So I don't know so much about packaging as, as obviously you do. So uh, appreciate uh, your walkthrough of, of uh, how you see things. Uh, I gave a, presentations, uh, a presentation two days ago about IoT, uh, Internet of Things. And I believe that uh, when you talk about the machine connectivity, that yes. is, uh, of course, uh, IoT. Is IoT something that uh, is uh, already uh, taking a, a lot of uh, uh, energy and, and uh, mindset from, from Bob's perspective, or is it more something that you will do in the future? No, so the, the, the Internet of Things, this is part of our strategy. You, you said it well. Uh, when we connect machines, uh, we will connect them to get data from the machines. And then once we get data from the machines, it will help us on things like predictive maintenance. Uh, we can also help you to monitor your production better. So our strategy is now built on the, the connectivity, the digitization, the automation, and the sustainability. These are the four key pillars. And then Internet of Things is part of it, and it will accelerate in the next five years. We are now on a five years journey. Okay. Um, well, I, I can't remember who I spoke to, but I think it was actually I think it was actually one of your customers because I was with uh, um, I was with a printing company in southern France. Uh, Two years ago, right now, right now I can't remember. But they had like a few, three, four Bob's machines, and I was just wondering because 
I think that it was a guy that I spoke to that said that the packaging industry in general is an extremely conservative industry. Yes, yes. So would you think that, uh, because I mean, obviously with, if you can with IoT have uh, plant maintenance, and you can uh, monitor productions to help your, your converters to be more efficient and things like that. Do you think that the change for BOPS and your converters into IoT will be faster than for example, JDF? <laughs> so you're right that the, the packaging industry is conservative for, for a lot of reasons. When you make a new package, you have to, to test so many things. And then that process takes a long time. And, and the quality is pretty good. So today we purchase a lot of goods uh, with a fantastic packaging around it. And that industry has been evolving over the last 100 years, and now it's working. But the problem it is that it takes between six months to 18 months to create a new package. And that's a little bit complicated. So the, the converters, the one you met in the south of France or could be anywhere, they know that they have to, to, to be... The name, Autajon. <laughs> ah, Autajon, yeah. Autajon is a very well-known uh, player. Uh, it was just, you, just, what was the name? What was the name? And now I yeah. remember. No, so Autajon is a, is a leading uh, converter and they know that they have to move faster. So they are going to keep doing what they do, but they will automate as much as they can. And very, very important, they will build a, um, a workflow that is going to connect all the key stakeholders. Why does it take between six months to 18 months to make a package today? Because when you have an idea, you design your box, then you need to print it, then you need to, to finish it, and then it has sometimes to be done in different countries. And you need to make sure that the converters are using the same substrates, they are using the same finishing equipment, so that the two products looks the same. So if you buy a box in the UK from a given brand, it is the same box in Italy and the same box in Germany, even if it has been produced in different countries. And then the packers, the, if you make a change on your box or if you make a specific box, the packers, they need to test the box in the filling chain. And then I will give you a simple example. Imagine you have an existing box in carton, and then you make a little change in the box. You make it a little bit smaller, and you make it, and you make the carton a little bit thinner. But if the packers are not aware about that little change, then it will be a problem. And then the retailers, if they don't know either, when they are going to pile the box one on top of the other, if the carton is thinner, maybe the pile will fall down. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, a lot of information has to be exchanged, and all of this should be done digitally. Yeah. And today, it is, I, it is a lot of things. I send you a file, then I send you a box, you make the test, you call me back two weeks after, and then you tell me it does not work. I make a change, I send you back. It takes forever. So we are now going to enter the digitalization of packaging production. It doesn't mean that everything will be printed digitally or converted with digital laser cutter. Mm -hmm. That will happen as well. But what will happen first is the digitalization of the workflow. Mm -hmm. And then we will connect all the machines and the machines will exchange information from one to the other. So if I change the size in my PDF, the machine will know that everything is a little bit smaller or bigger. That makes sense. Uh, one of the things that I couldn't help thinking was that when you presented the different uh, technologies and you said like the 1% of the digital print, for example, I was I was wondering um, the, 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 the one thing is of course the growth in it, but would you say that the growth in digital does it come from more customers requiring short runs or does it come from more customers wanting to have mass customization? Huh. It, it, uh, so mass customization and, and short runs, it's, it's a little bit the same. So when I said 1%, also I should add that 1% is total. If you look at the label industry, digital is 30%. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So digital has made major inroads in labels. It's 30% today and it will grow. In 2025, I can bet it will be 50%. And why? Because of what you said. In labels, you have a lot, a lot of short runs. 
Yeah. And the machines have improved their productivity. And the, the quality, quality as well. The quality yeah. is fantastic. Mm -hmm. What is still missing is the cost, but they yeah. are making progress. Yeah. And but, but that also uh, maybe changes a little bit because I think that uh, um, uh, we covered a Hikon open house in uh, Dallas at the Printer United. And uh, um, one of the people that were presenting it was also saying that maybe also the printing industry has to move away from, you know, being focused on price per piece to what value creation you create for your customers, right? Okay, so that one, I know it. I have used it many times. But the reality is that Custom value down the price all the time. <laughs> yeah, so value yeah. for the customers, blah, blah, blah. In theory, it works. So when you ask someone, would you be willing to pay a little bit more for this and that? Some people say yes when you when, when they do when you do the survey. But when they are shopping, they don't do it. So we need to, to keep in mind that except very rare occasions price has a limit so you cannot launch a new technology and and assuming that consumers will pay for it so the cost of a box today is what it is and if you make millions of boxes you cannot increase the price just by a little bit even no. if it is one cent more if you multiply it by one million it's a lot of money and nobody is willing to pay yeah, and that I think also answers because in the chat, uh, Andreas has asked uh, that you have for a long time been talking about the digital printing is growing fast, but the digital print market share in total is still very low. So what's yes. wrong? And I think, and you just answered it because I mean, if it's just slightly more expensive, there's no yes. reason to to change. Exactly. The in fact, you have three things to seem to summarize about why is digital printing not growing as fast as we thought. It has been very fast in levels. And it, it yeah. works in labels. For the because rest, it makes sense. Because it makes sense, right? Yeah, and yeah. not because you need to have quality multiply by productivity, multiply by cost. Yeah. And if the three are not good, it doesn't take off. So in labels, we have been able to produce, and Otagion is a very good uh, example. Otagion is capable of producing high quality labels digitally, very fast, and at a reasonable price. In folding carton, corrugated board, and flexible packaging, it is not the case today. Today, digital printing in folding carton is very expensive. Yeah. Same for uh, corrugated, same for flexible packaging. And we have a good example. At Bobst, four years ago, we launched a digital corrugated press. It was called Geneva. And that product was fantastic in terms of quality, very high speed, but the cost per copy was still too high. The machine was too expensive, mm. and we had to stop it. We had to cancel it. Okay, so that so, was you had to you had just to say that okay, we had invested in this, but the output is is very high quality, yeah. but it was too expensive. So that you had to make a business decision. I have a final question before we we had to end the session, and it's just because you mentioned it yourself. Uh, lethal offset or offset is still like 64, 66 percent of the market when it comes to uh, packaging. What is your opinion about uh, the ratio between uh, uh, B1 machines and VLF uh, formats when it comes to packaging, especially for folded carton? Also, folded carton is, is primarily dominated by the, the, the B1 format. Okay. So, so the uh, large format is, is for other type of applications. It could be for uh, pre-print in corrugated, um, but the, the with B1 in uh, folding carton, you cover okay. quite a lot. So, so from from what you what uh, uh, because I mean uh, you know there's been a lot of questions about hyper strategy to to stop using the VLF format as a producing machine. And I was I, I you know maybe it's just because I didn't know enough. I thought actually that in packaging a lot of converters would like to have a larger format, but that is not for the folding carton boxes. No. You say that's more for like the, uh, the 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 liners and for those kind of things, basically. Co correct. Okay. Well. Um, I really think this has been a great uh, uh, opportunity to hear you, Francois. So uh, thank you very much for your time here on Learn With Us. And I know that you and I are most likely going to have a chance to meet next week again. And I look forward to have more time talking to you more uh, instead of being uh, only about products, we can talk about market and environment and everything that comes to mind, right? Okay. No, uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me. And I wish you an excellent uh, 
day. And if people have questions, you know where to find me on LinkedIn and anywhere. Sure. Thank you very much for your time and talk to you soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye.